subject to be discussing, but, but we have to move on to an even more important subject because we Brits have been dictating what fruit spread uh, should be called across the EU. And one German MEP thinks uh, and hopes that Brexit will be an opportunity to reclaim the Teutonic tradition when it comes to conserves or conservatives with a small c, preserves. Jacob von Weissacker joins us now uh, from Brussels. Uh, welcome to the programme. I'm just going to put up on the screen, you can't see it. I've got a little marmalade here. And on this toast, I've got what we call marmalade in the UK. It's made with oranges. On the other bit of toast, we've got strawberry jam, in which uh, is not made with oranges. I think the clue's in the name. Are you saying that in Germany, after Brexit, both could be called marmalade? <laughs> well, it turns out, but that's a purely linguistic exercise. <laughs> we call one marmalade, and the other one we call marmalade. Uh, and that's not a problem as long as you speak um, these things, but it's a problem once you start writing them because they just look the same. And so it was agreed a long time ago, and that was a bit of a victory for Britain at the time, that uh, what we call um, um, uh, orange, orange marmalade, or orange marmalade would be called marmalade, and all the rest of it would have to be called contrary to German linguistic tradition, confiture um, or, or fruchtaufstrich. Now, uh, whatever the case may be, I did indeed ask a tongue-in-cheek question <laughs> to the Commission whether Germans would be allowed to uh, um, call their jam um, marmalade again uh, after Brexit to mm. sweet sweeten the bitter aftertaste of, of Britain leaving the EU. And now, clearly, that was a tongue-in-cheek question. And so, to my great surprise, <laughs> both the te Daily Telegraph and the Daily Mail <laughs> made a story out of that, of, a, uh, of an angry German um, uh, uh, asking for his um, um, mar marmalade back. <laughs> Uh, and in fact, it was just a bit of a joke. Uh, so so, so no. it was an odd experience with part of the British press, I can, I can yeah, tell you that. I, I think you've learned the hard way that when it comes to some European things, you, you can't really joke with the Daily Mail or the Daily Telegraph on that. You said allowing marmalade to be called marmalade again could help sweeten the bitter aftertaste of Brexit for many EU citizens. So that's, um, that's quite an important policy you've come across there, isn't it? <laughs> quite, quite. <laughs> Can, uh, d does it take the EU to do this? After all, on Champagne, only sparkling wine from the Champagne region can be called Champagne, and that's actually done, that's actually secured by the Treaty of Versailles in uh, in 1919. Couldn't we have another international treaty to protect marmalade? Well, I, I'm, I'm not certain whether we should go back to having treaties uh, <laughs> of Versailles and such things. I, I think, uh, um, no, 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 but, but serious, more, more seriously, I, th I think one, one of the important subjects we're discussing in the context of Brexit is whether, uh, in fact, uh, Britain is going to leave both the single market and the customs mm -hmm. union, which would have major disadvantages for Britain, uh, and would have made disadvantages for the uh, EU 27 remaining in the EU, or whether we can think of better ways of a divorce settlement. Okay. And that's, of course, a serious matter we, uh, that is currently Indeed. under discussion. Indeed. Um, and and uh, unfortunately, it, it turns out, in okay. order to have such uh, uh, arrangements uh, like the single market, uh, we need to reach compromises. All and right, and I need to stop you because we, we've run out of time. But I hope you'll come back and speak to us on other issues too, Jacob van Weizsäcker. <laughs> a pleasure to talk <laughs> to you. I'll be back pleasure. on BBC <laughs> One tonight you. with This Week, uh, just after question time. Very late.